Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two U's fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy Enjoy the the episode. episode. Hello everyone it's Marcia and I'm on my own this time. The reason is I just wanted to finish up talking about what we did on the Scotland trip. Uh, We're home And Kim is not on this uh, recording because she's back at work. The truth is, we were so tired by the end of our trip that we really just didn't have the energy to record. So I've been home now for two days. So just to finish up what we did, I think we left off that we had just um, taken the ferry, I believe, from the Orkney Islands back to mainland Scotland. And so that first day, we continued down the, um, the east coast of Scotland. And our first night, we stayed at a hotel called Force of Nature, and that's F-O-R-S-E of Nature. So we, we stayed at the hotel, lovely family who owns it, who's working to uh, restore it. It's an old house built couple hundred years ago that has had various incarnations as a hospital and etc and so they bought it a few years ago and are slowly and steadily remodeling it and improving Um, but it was a lovely place to stay lovely family and they recommended that we eat at a restaurant um, called the bay owl and they said don't let the exterior uh, dissuade you from going into this restaurant and I'm glad we didn't because we had a wonderful meal there it was very good Um, there's pictures on Instagram of what we had but the highlight of the meal I think honestly was dessert and we'd seen this on the menus other places but we had not ordered but we finally did and it's sticky toffee pudding probably the best thing I've eaten in my entire life it was so good And we asked about the recipe, and the owner of the restaurant said that, um, first she joked and said, oh, it's a secret. (laughs) And then she said, the truth is, it's a recipe from a uh, chef. I had not heard of him before, but his name is Gary Rhodes. And um, I will put a link in the show notes to a recipe, his, excuse me, his recipe that I found online. Anyway, as I say, it was probably the best thing I've eaten, and um, so I am going to try and make it this weekend. So the next day, we got up, and we drove down. We checked out of the hotel and drove down to Dunbeath Castle, and this is a private castle. It's not, the house is not open to the public, but you can take a tour of the gardens, and just a heads up, you can't just show up. You need to actually email them and schedule an appointment of the gardens. Uh, which we did, and we met Neil, who is the head gardener, and he took us on a great tour of the garden. Uh, There's a wall garden. I don't know how to describe it. It was just so elegant and lovely and um, quite a variety of plants. It was interesting talking to him. Uh, If you're interested in gardening, it was interesting talking to him about the conditions that exist at Uh, Dunbeath Castle because it is right on this um, cliff above the water and it gets a lot of wind and cold air and mostly it's the wind that he has to deal with and how he's learned over the 14 years as the head gardener about where to plant things for them to grow and how to protect them. Um, So very interesting talking to him and he was nice too. He, um, uh, after our tour, of the wall garden, there's a second wall garden, which he says is sort of the masculine garden, and it has an interesting tea room there. I say tea room not for the public, but it's a Japanese tea room. Um, and then there's a little uh, croft cottage on the property that the owner has uh, has a, um, a pool in there, um, and also a place for him to sit and have tea and, and watch TV and whatnot and enjoy the garden. So um, he took us all around the castle. As I say, we couldn't go in the castle, but down to the viewpoint. Um, and I've posted some pictures on Instagram of, of that. Um, one of the things we loved about Neil was just his descriptions of flowers. And 
my favorite is he just would refer, he would refer to little flowers as just a um, a quiet little flower, and so that's something I think I love that. I think I may use that uh, uh, describing uh, some of my flowers in my garden as a quiet little flower. I love that. Um, probably the most positive person I've met in my entire life. Just very. Um, just in love with his profession of gardening. We heard about his background um, and what led him to gardening. Uh, but just so happy and positive, just really, really lovely man and very sweet. And so that was, if you are in the area and you go to Dunbeath Catholic, Dunbeath Castle, I highly recommend reaching out to the castle and scheduling a, a tour of the garden. Well worth it. Uh, and then after that, we continued down the coast. We stopped in a town called Brora, B-R-O-R-A, and there is uh, King Craig uh, Fabrics there, and they have all sorts of tartans, uh, blankets. They have yarn for sale. Um, we didn't buy any yarn, but um, we both bought some fabric. I bought a tartan that... Um, I think I'm going to make it into a pillow. And Kim bought some um, uh, sort of a herringbone weave um, in a beautiful, beautiful blue that she bought for seats for the chairs that she's having painted for her dining room. So that was a really fun stop. And I say I'll put the, the link to the website in the show notes. Our next stop was Dun Robin Castle. And we took a tour of the gardens. Very different garden than Dunbeath Castle. Very formal. Not a lot of color. Most of the garden... Now, it could be, too, that it's early in the season. Um, and, again, weather conditions there are more intense. So it, uh, But the, the focus is more greenery and textures of green. Um, so we toured the garden, toured the castle, and also watched the falconry. Uh, display, which was, that was also really interesting, discussing the different types of hawks and falcons that they had there and um, how they hunt and the training process. Um, that was, was fascinating. So then that night we continued on down the coast and we spent the night at Kin Craig Castle Hotel. And that was fun. It's an old, I don't know if you would call it a castle. They call it a castle, but it's a, maybe a country house that has been converted into a hotel and that was very nice very comfortable we ate dinner at the hotel we had the five course scottish tasting menu which was excellent and of course it included haggis and i think this is my new uh favorite thing i really enjoyed the haggis we had it three times on the trip and every time it was delicious uh the next day was a long day we drove down to edinburgh and we really didn't stop anywhere other than bathroom breaks, that type of thing. We really wanted to get down to the city because Kim wanted to go see the exhibit Orla Kylie, A Life in Pattern, that was at Dovecote Studios. And the studios is actually a tapestry studio where they're making tapestries. Um, that part was closed. You could see it, but nobody was working on it. Um, we were actually arrived on a Saturday. But we, we looked around and enjoyed the, the exhibit, had a little something to eat. And then that night, we had dinner at Cafe Tartine. Um, it's a French restaurant in Leith where we were staying. And I should say that we were staying at a hotel called GPO Cafe and Rooms. And GPO, I believe, stands for, I'm assuming, government post office or something, or general post office. But it's an old post office that's been converted into a cafe and then some rooms. And that was nice. It's a great location in Leith. And Leith is a really nice part of Edinburgh to stay. Um, lots of ca nice cafes within walking distance. And um, uh, nice to be off, sort of out of the big touristy area on Princess Street or the Royal Mile. The next day, we went over to, we walked over basically, well, we took the bus to Princess Street and then walked over to a yarn shop called Be Inspired Fibers and Yarn Shop, and it's owned by Mei Chung, and 
she has a really nice shop, interesting yarns. Some of your basics, they had, she had Cascade 220, which was interesting. I, um, and, um, both Kim and I bought some, uh, yarn. I believe Kim bought some yarn from Kate Davies and I bought some DK called Illustrious. I believe that's, wait a minute. I have it right here. Yes. Illustrious. It's a uh, 70% Falkland wool and 30% British alpaca. And it's made by West Yorkshire spinners. And I had seen this yarn someplace else. It's, it's sort of like the UK version of Cascade 220. You know, it, this is DK, but it's kind of a workhorse yarn. And it's really, uh, has a nice hand just feeling it. And uh, May um, raved about this, this particular um, illustrious. So I bought um, six skeins and I think I'm going to make a, a sweater out of it. Of course, Kelly, as she's listening to this, will be laughing because as she knows, I always buy a sweater quantity of anything I buy. Uh, so, and then it was our last night in, or our last day in Edinburgh before we caught the train the next day. So after we went to the, the yarn shop, uh, we made our way back to the Caledonia and sat and or actually I take it back. I have that all completely the wrong way. Our first stop in the morning is we went to the Caledonian and sat in the lobby or bar, I should say, and had tea um, and just to knit because uh, as Kim and I, the whole trip, were always on a quest. This is the same thing that happened last year on the trip. Always on a quest to find a nice place to sit and have a drink or have some tea and knit. And it was really hard to find any hotels that had a nice lobby where you could sit and do that. But the Caledonia had a nice lobby and they had a nice bar area, well lit by the windows where we sat in and, and um, had tea. Um, so we, we actually did that before we went to Be Inspired and then went over to Be Inspired. As I say, great shop, highly recommend it. And then um, we stopped at another little cafe later on and had a... Um, a scone and some tea. A lot of tea drinking going on on this trip. And then that night was our, as I say, it was our last night in Edinburgh. And we went to a uh, restaurant that one of the uh, women, her husband, that had attended was at the um, the retreat up in John O'Groats, uh, recommended a place called Cafe Royale, and or maybe it's Cafe Royal. We had a very nice dinner there. Interesting restaurant old pub style, but very good, had haggis again, which also was very good, and um, then went to bed and packed up and left our hotel. Uh, The goal was to be in our taxi at 8.30. We had a lot of difficulty getting a taxi. Apparently, nothing was running, and it took us, we were a little bit panicked. We did not get breakfast um, because we were trying, our plan was to get to the train station early and have something to eat at the train station. But as it is, we got there just in the nick of time for our train since it w- we had so much trouble getting a taxi. We had to make do on the train, and, and we thought, oh, they'll be serving food immediately on the train. And they were having all kinds of problems. They had food, but they had no one on the train to serve it until we got to Newcastle, which was an hour and a half later, maybe an hour later. So I, needless to say, we were starving by the time we got food. Um, they were having a lot of problems on the train. That also uh, cash only. Their credit card system had gone down. So, in London, it was a complete deluge, raining so hard, and we got very cold and wet waiting for our taxi. We get to the hotel we were staying at, called the and it's called the Mar- Marlebone Marleybone Hotel. And we got there and we were so wet and so cold and so tired that we got to our room and we had bathrobes, we had slippers, we had ice in an ice bucket, we had a flat screen TV, we had a fabulous shower, we had a heated bathroom floor, we had an espresso coffee maker. It was just heaven and very comfortable beds with really nice sheets and it was just so wonderful to get there and because we were so cold so we put on our slippers and our bathrobes and we each laid on our beds and we watched trashy tv and we each had a gin and tonic and um knitted and then I fell asleep uh I was really really tired um just 
as you know, traveling, you're up at six, seven, you don't go to bed till midnight. Um, just two and a half weeks of this just paid the price. I was paying the price. So I have to say I had a little bit of guilt that here I am in London, uh, one of the greatest cities in the world, and I'm laying on a bed watching trashy TV, drinking gin and tonics, but I was so tired. We just had dinner that night at the hotel, and the next day we got up and went for a walk because we knew we were going to be sitting on the plane for a long time and uh, walked around. It had cleared. It was nice and sunny. We walked around, we looked in some shops, didn't go in any, didn't buy anything. The truth is, completely burned out with shopping. Um, at Kim, as you know, is not on this recording, but I know she would agree it was a really great trip. As I say, I will put links to to the websites of um, all the places that we toured, the places that we stayed, all the shops that we visited. Then the other thing I just want to say about the trip, and this is not related to the trip necessarily, but I have to just send out a huge, huge, huge thank you to Jean uh, Chambers, who owns String Theory Yarns and Fibers in Seabrook, Washington, because she wanted to take care of Enzo while I was gone. And so my son, Ben, drove Enzo down to Seabrook. It's a two and a half, three hour drive. And so he spent about 10, and then Enzo spent about 10 days with Jean. And I hear uh, that he had a great time. He was in the yarn shop with her every day. He greeted people. Then my brother uh, went down to pick him up because he had been in London. Um, He got home on the fourth, I believe. And then on the sixth, he went down and drove down to pick Enzo up and stayed a couple days and learned that uh, as he was walking Enzo around Seabrook, people were coming up and greeting Enzo. Hi, Enzo. (laughs) So I guess Enzo made quite an impression down there. But I really appreciate Jean uh, offering to take Enzo and giving him such great care. And then also to my brother, who uh, made the effort to, you know, he had to go down and drive after he got back from London. He had to drive two and a half hours down to Seabrook and pick up Enzo and then take care of him when he brought him home. So, and I was thrilled to see Enzo and he was thrilled to see me. My son Ben is not home. He left June 2nd for Alaska. He uh, made it all the way up to Prudhoe Bay and now he's making his way back down to Seattle. I'll be seeing him probably the end of June. So that's the Scotland trip, fabulous time. And then I just want to give everyone just a a project update on what I did uh, uh, in terms of knitting on the trip. So at the retreat, they had asked us to, if we wanted to, to knit preemie hats that were going to be donated. So I made two preemie hats. And thank you to Kim who brought some at the, the last minute, literally just about 10 minutes before we left for the airport. She threw some yarn into her bag. And so we both knitted uh, preemie hats from that uh, her, her uh, leftover yarn. That was really fun. And then I finished the socks that I had been working on for a while uh, with the... Uh, yarn from Little Fish Stitches, Little excuse me, Little Fish Stitch, and the colorway is Happy Go Lucky, and I thought it was fun because the this dyer lives in Aberdeen, Washington, and I thought it was really cool that I was in Scotland. I was very close to Aberdeen, Scotland, but we did not get there. I thought if we had, it would have been so much fun to take a picture of the socks in Aberdeen, Scotland, but it didn't work, so I actually just took the the picture of the socks at the Nakando Mill, and that I did post that on Instagram, and they're also in my uh, project updates too. After I finished the the little fish stitch socks, I started a pair of socks with Shopple Wool Das Par, and I bought this yarn at String Theory Yarns in Seabrook, and it's you, you'll how I say this, you end up with a matching pair of socks. So the yarn, there's a, a knot as you're winding the, the yarn into a cake from the, the skein, you come across a knot, and that's the indicator of where the, the second sock should start. So I got down to, I'm halfway through the foot of the first sock. So I worked on that quite a bit. And then I didn't say, I can't say I finished the body, but I got, I got down to the part of the body where I'm now going to start doing, there's a, a, a repeat of lace, or, uh, an edging of lace. 
at the bottom of the sweater and I got down to that point I'm about to start the lace so I did pretty well because I think I had before I left I had maybe done I don't know maybe five inches from the underarm down this is a top down uh, t-shirt and I maybe had done about five inches down from the underarm and so it's 13 inches to the point where I'm now going to start the lace so that's where I am right now and the pattern is Lace Market by Marie Green. The yarn is also shopple wool, but it's El Lineo, and it's a linen. So that's just a project update, and I will be back in the next episode, and Kelly and I will be recording together. All right, bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing, doing our, our part, part for World, World Fleece. Fleece.